Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Listen, during this pandemic, the most important things that I care about are actually my kids. What when we do? think about, yeah, that's true, I do. I think it's important to talk about kids and the prevalence of disease and potential treatment, but I don't think that I'm the best person to talk to for that. For that, we're gonna bring in a pediatric infectious disease specialist, and I'm just gonna be a concerned dad. I hope you enjoy the video. Subscribe! <laughs> See you guys later. I'm a dad, and I brought my wife, and now we're gonna talk to the pediatric infectious disease physician, Dr. Prober. Hey, good afternoon, Dr. Prober. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself? Good afternoon, Dr. Rutland, I, I would love to. Uh, I'm Charles Prober. I'm a pediatric infectious disease subspecialist. And recently, about three years ago, I founded a new center at Stanford called the Stanford Center for Health Education, where we aim to provide a credible and clear health education uh, around the globe. You know, I saw the website. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's on that website? One of the programs embedded on that website is called Digital Medic, which stands for the Digital Medical International Collaborative. And then we have a YouTube channel for Digital Medic uh, as well. So what's your favorite video on the website? Uh, I like the content related to mask wearing and the different ways to wear the mask properly. Uh, I like the content that we created for health professionals to try to help them diagnose and treat COVID infections. Uh, that content has spread now to about 100,000 learners in different regions of the world. All right, Dr. Prober. So all of the data in children has been based on the wild type coronavirus, but now we got the Delta. What can you tell me about the prevalence of the Delta variant right now, especially in kids? Children certainly are infected with the coronavirus that causes COVID at a reasonably high rate and have been that way since the beginning of the pandemic. Very fortunately, uh, children do not get sick anywhere near the degree that adults get sick. There have been about four and a half million cases of COVID in the United States in children. Less than 2% of all of those cases occurring in children result in hospitalization. I mean, any percent is too high, but it's less than 2%. The number of deaths in children is somewhere between about 400 and 700 across the entire United States since the beginning of the pandemic. To put that in perspective, as I pondered this, chickenpox is considered to be a mild illness in children, right? Virtually all of the time. Yet we developed a chickenpox vaccine. And why did we do it? One of the reasons was each year in the United States, about four to 500 children died of chickenpox. So in order to prevent chickenpox, we developed that vaccination and now there's less chickenpox deaths. Dr. Prober, my question is, we have a six-year-old and an eight-year-old heading back to school. When are vaccines coming for children under the age of 12? And if they do, should they get vaccinated? It's coming. I have no question about that. Children need the vaccine because of everything else we've spoken about, which is their ability to infect their parents, their grandparents, immunocompromised individuals. So a good way to control an outbreak of an infection in a community, in a society, is by protecting the children. So with this more transmissible variant, what are some things that our kids' school can do to keep our kids safe? One is to get everybody vaccinated that is eligible for vaccination. The second is to try to maintain distance between people. The virus cannot travel great distances. Of course, in a classroom, you can only physically get so much distance, depending on how many students you have, but you can open the windows, you can get ventilation, and that also is sort of, in my mind at least, part of the, the distancing effect between people. The third thing, which all of us can do, is wear masks. So one of the protections you had mentioned was 
everybody that can get vaccinated should get vaccinated. But should we be concerned about breakthrough infections? Time out. When we think about this term breakthrough infection, this is a term that I'm not in love with. It's because vaccines weren't designed to prevent infection. Vaccines were designed to prevent severe disease. That is, allow the immune system to see a piece of a virus and be able to recognize it and clear it before severe disease is a consequence. So I would more look at breakthrough disease, not breakthrough infection. Should we be concerned about breakthrough infections? They're very, very reduced in proportion to non-breakthrough infections. Severe disease in breakthrough infections is extraordinarily uncommon in terms of hospitalizations and deaths. As, as you know, 98% of hospitalizations and deaths currently uh, with, with COVID is, are in unvaccinated persons. So vaccine is great. And masks have the same physical principles, whether it's a Delta variant or a non-Delta variant. All right, Dr. Prober, so let's get straight to the point. You know, when you look at children, when they are infected with coronavirus, they tend to infect about 20% of their household contacts. So in an unvaccinated home, that seems like that could be really lethal. What do you think about all that? I mean, any new parent knows that, gee, something's happening to me. I'm having all of these infections all of a sudden. I haven't had infections runny nose for like 20 years. And they didn't because they didn't have little children infecting them. And most of the time, it's not a big deal because these are the common cold, you know, the rhinoviruses and so forth. For this one, you are absolutely correct. This is a big deal. We know how bad this virus can be in adults, especially older adults. We know how bad it can be in adults with pre-existing conditions and to the elderly. I cannot imagine anything worse than having a loved one die from something that was absolutely preventable. So, you know, I know the fear of side effects. Most side effects of any medicine is based on how long the medicine lasts in your system, right? The half-life. The half-life of mRNA is like two hours. So I don't see scientific sense in the worry, but I do understand it. But with that being said, let's think about communicating vaccine education. What are some of the things that you learned on strategies to communicate effective vaccine education? I just learned the other day, I hadn't thought of this before. Some people don't even like the word herd immunity because it sounds like sheep following a leader to you know, some bad outcome. And so maybe you know, community immunity is better sort of building a community that surrounds all of those with care and love. I mean, that's what this is about, trying to cocoon, to protect everybody. Rumors about vaccination have been present for literally hundreds of years from the time of smallpox. Um, and so, the, again, not a new phenomena. And I think the, the getting out of the resistance or the hesitancy is an educational journey. It's interesting you bring up smallpox because whenever I talk to patients that look like me, I tell them the story of Onesimus. Onesimus was an African slave in the 1700s who was bought to an owner that lived in Boston during the time of smallpox. At the time, anyone who had smallpox, 30% of those people died. You know that, I know that. What the African slave Onesimus taught his master, and I hate saying that, but just to make this point, was that in Africa, what they did was they popped the pustules of people with smallpox, and they actually rubbed that fluid into open wounds of other people. And then they noticed that people who got that fluid, they did not get smallpox vaccination, which was brought to this country by an African slave. Well, thank you for that story, because I did not know that story. And, uh, and I absolutely agree that stories are, are profoundly important. Dr. Prober, at some point, we will have to have a conversation with our children about vaccination. How would you explain this to them? So to a, a six-year-old, I would explain what a virus is and how it can get into your nose and make your nose run because it's irritating or bothering your nose. Um, but we have a way of preventing that by taking part of that particular bad virus and making it not able to spread to anybody. And then once we do that, we can give you a little bit of that, which can't make you sick, 
because it's now very damaged, but it makes your body strong and your body remember that if it ever sees that, it's going to attack it, your strong body with all, and it's not going to allow it to make you sick. So it, it depends yeah. on the age of the child. And it's funny yeah. once you ask that, explaining it to an adult, um, I feel like a bit of an idiot. Uh, because, you know, who wants to hear me talk about evil viruses? And I actually thought that explanation was great. So I just want to thank you for that explanation. And I want to thank you for today's visit. My wife and I definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, and I hope you have, you know, a wonderful day um, in the Bay Area. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Rutland and Dory. It was really a pleasure having this conversation. Um, I wish you all of the best. And I wish your six-year-old and eight-year-old great fun this year uh, back at school. Thank you for joining Medicine Deconstructed. Uh, me and my wife both appreciate you guys being here. Uh, again, we have children. We know that you have children. That's our biggest fear. We hope that we've helped calm down some of those fears. And you guys all understand that kids do not get as sick and kids for some reason that we all can't explain just yet, they're a little bit protected from COVID-19. Enjoy the school year, wear those masks, social distance where you can. And if you're a parent, get vaccinated. Again, we love our kids. You can see ours behind us. We're just here to arm you with information. Come back next week for some more ammunition. What are you doing? <laughs>